Hello, I'm David Hardesty, and in this lecture, we examine the special U.S. tax rules for taxation of gains or, and losses from U.S. real property interests. The objectives of this lecture are to understand the following. How to identify U.S. real property interests. The determination of the amount of gain or loss associated with dispositions of U.S. real property interests. The way in which such gains or losses are taxed. Income tax withholding associated with dispositions of U.S. real property interests and the impact of U.S. tax treaties on income and loss from dispositions of U.S. real property interests. Here's an overview of the special rules for U.S. domestic taxation of gains or losses from dispositions of U.S. real property interests. Foreign taxpayers, that is, non-resident aliens and foreign corporations, are generally not taxed on U.S. source capital gains. Non-resident aliens are not taxed on these gains where they are neither present in the United States for more than 183 days and the gains are not effectively connected with a U.S. trade or business. And no provision is made for the taxation of capital gains of a corporation that are not effectively connected. However, under the special rules of Section 897, gains and losses from dispositions of U.S. real property interests are deemed to be effectively connected and are therefore subject to tax in the United States at regular tax rates. U.S. real property interests include the following. Direct interests in U.S. real property and stock in a domestic corporation that is a U.S. real property holding company. On a disposition of a U.S. real property interest, tax is generally withheld by the transferee at a rate of 15% of the amount realized, except that withholding is limited to the transferee's maximum tax liabilities if it is less. U.S. tax treaties generally have no effect on the U.S. taxation of dispositions of U.S. real property interests. Here's an example comparing the taxation of U.S. capital gains with the gains from the disposition of a U.S. real property interest. Chu is a country ex-citizen and resident who sells stock in domestic co a U.S. publicly traded corporation, and recognizes a gain. Chu is not present in the United States for more than 183 days and is not taxed in the United States on this gain. In addition, Chu recognizes a gain when she sells stock in Realty Co., a corporation that constitutes a U.S. real property interest. Chu is taxed on this gain in the United States regardless of her presence in the United States. The gain is taxed as effectively connected income. Let's start the discussion with the definition of a U.S. real property interest. A U.S. real property interest is defined as a direct interest in U.S. real property, which includes an interest in land and buildings, uh, an interest in a mine, well, or other natural deposit, where that real property is located in the United States or the U.S. Virgin Islands. Such an interest can include <clears throat> leasehold interests and options on real property. It can also include personal property associated with the use of real property. A U.S. real property interest also includes 
an interest other than as a creditor in the stock of certain domestic corporations that hold U.S. real property. In general, a U.S. real property interest held by a partnership is treated as held proportionally by the partners. The partnership itself is not treated as a U.S. real property interest. Here's an example of a U.S. real property interest. Matthews is a country X citizen and resident who invests in real estate in the United States. He owns a 10% undivided interest in undeveloped land in Florida. This land constitutes a U.S. real property interest. In addition, he holds a 5% interest in a U.S. partnership that invests in Texas land. By holding an interest in the partnership, Matthews is treated as holding a proportionate interest in its real property, which is a U.S. real property interest. A U.S. real property interest includes an interest in the stock of certain domestic corporations that hold interests in U.S. Real, real property. A domestic corporation is a U.S. real property interest if the corporation was a real property holding company at any time during the period the stock was held or the preceding five years, if a shorter period. By its terms, the definition of a U.S. real property interest does not include stock of a foreign corporation. On the other hand, the stock is not a U.S. real property interest if it did not hold any U.S. real property interest on the date of the disposition of the stock and certain other conditions are met. In addition, stock in a publicly held company is not a U.S. real property interest if at no time during the period the stock was held or the preceding five years, if shorter, the holder owned no more than 5% of that class of stock. What is a real property holding company? For purposes of the rules cited in the previous slide, a real property holding company is any corporation if the fair market value of its U.S. real property interests equals or exceeds 50% of the sum of the fair value of the corporation's U.S. real property interests, non-U.S. real property, plus other assets used in the trader business. Note that assets not used in the business, such as a portfolio of securities, are not considered for purposes of the 50% test. As an alternative test, a corporation is presumed not to be a real property holding company if the book value under U.S. GAAP of its U.S. real property interests does not exceed 25% of the book value of the corporation's U.S. real property interests, non-U.S. real property, plus other assets used in the trader business. This presumption does not apply if the corporation has reason to believe that the value of its U.S. real property exceeds 50% of assets. The regulations establish testing dates for determining if a corporation is a real property holding company. Under these rules, there are both fixed dates for testing and events that trigger testing. Here's an example of a real property holding company. Domestico is a U.S. corporation that is not publicly held. In 2009, it holds U.S. real property valued at $500,000. No real property outside of the United States, and it owns other trader business assets valued at $1,600,000. 
U.S. real property interests constitute less than 50% of the total assets, and Domestico is not a U.S. real property holding corporation. If in 2010 it uses $600,000 to acquire additional U.S. real property so that its real property is valued at $1,100,000 out of total assets of $2,100,000, then it will become a U.S. real property holding corporation. In 2011, one of Domestic Co.'s shareholders sells stock in the, in the company. This sale will be treated as a sale of a U.S. real property interest. In determining if a corporation is a U.S. real property holding company, we must take into account interests it holds in other corporations. If a parent corporation owns 50% or more of the fair value of another corporation's stock, then for purposes of the definition of a U.S. real property holding company, the parent is treated as owning a proportionate share of that corporation's assets. The controlled corporation can be either foreign or domestic. Solely for the purpose of determining if a domestic corporation is a U.S. real property holding corporation, an interest the corporation holds in a foreign corporation can be treated as a U.S. real property interest. For purposes of the definition of a U.S. real property holding corporation, a non-controlling interest held by a corporation is another, in another corporation that is a U.S. real property holding corporation is counted as a U.S. real property interest in its entirety. Here's an example of a controlling interest. Domestic Co. is a U.S. corporation. Its only asset is a 60% interest in the fair market value of the stock of FS, a foreign corporation, and a 60% interest in the fair market value of stock of DS, a domestic corporation. FS only asset is country F real estate valued at $1 million. And DS only asset is US real estate valued at $2 million. The value of domestic co stock in FS and DS is not taken into account for purposes of determining whether domestic co is a US real property holding corporation. Instead, because it holds controlling interests in both corporations, Domestic Co. is treated as holding a portion of each asset held by FS and DS. Its 60% share of Country F real estate has a value of $600,000. Its 60% share of U.S. real estate held by DS is valued at $1.2 million. Domestic Co. is a U.S. real property holding company corporation because the value $1.2 million of its U.S. real property exceeds 50% of the sum $1.8 million of the values of its U.S. and country F real property. Here is an example of a non-controlling interest. Domestic Co., a U.S. corporation, owns 40% of the stock of Foreign Corp. valued at $200,000, and it owns Country R real, real property valued at $100,000. Foreign Corp's only asset is U.S. real estate valued at $1 million. Foreign Corp is a U.S. real property holding company for this purpose and a U.S. real property interest for purposes of determining if Domestic Co. is a U.S. real property holding corporation. Because Domestico does not hold a controlling interest in Foreign Corp, 
It does not look through to the assets of Foreign Corp, but instead counts the Foreign Corp stock as a U.S. real property interest. Domestico is a U.S. real property holding corporation because the fair value of the stock, that is $200,000, exceeds 50% of the value of its assets. In determining if a corporation is a U.S. real property holding company, we must take into account real property held by pass-through entities. For purposes of determining if a corporation is a U.S. real property holding corporation, a corporation holding an interest in a partnership, trust, or an estate, whether domestic or foreign, is treated as holding a proportionate share of the assets held by the entity. Here is an example of an interest in a pass-through entity. Domestico is a partner in Foreign Partnership FP and its percentage ownership interest in FP is 50%. Domestico's other assets are Country F real estate valued at $500,000 and other trade or business assets valued at $100,000. FP's assets are Country Z real estate valued at $300,000 and U.S. real estate valued at $2 million. For purposes of determining whether Domestic Co. is a U.S. real property holding corporation, it is treated as holding its pro rata share of the assets held by FP. The value of Domestic Co.'s pro rata share of the U.S. real, real estate held by FP is $1 million dollars and the value of its pro rata share of the country Z real estate held by FP is $150,000. Domestic Co. is a U.S. real property holding corporation because the $1 million fair market value of its U.S. real property interests exceeds 50% of the $1,750,000 value of all of its assets. If property is a U.S. real property interest, then disposition of that property by a non-resident alien or foreign corporation is taxable in the United States. Gain or loss on the disposition of a U.S. real property interest by a non-resident alien or foreign corporation is taxed in the United States as effectively connected income. As such, the gain or loss is taxed in the same manner as it would be if recognized by a U.S. taxpayer. Here's an example of the sale of a U.S. real property interest by a non-resident alien. Who is a holder of stock in Domestic Co., a U.S. real property holding corporation? Her basis in the stock is $100 and she sells it for $250 and recognizes a $150 gain. Who must file a U.S. tax return because the gain is effectively connected income and must pay tax in the United States on that gain? If the gain is long-term, then she benefits from the reduced rates on long-term capital gains the same as a U.S. citizen or resident. Although gains and losses recognized by a foreign person on disposition of a U.S. real property interest are uh, taxed in the same manner as those of U.S. persons. Unlike U.S. persons, foreign persons are subject to withholding on those dispositions. Section 1445 requires a transferee to withhold and remit 15% of the amount realized by a foreign holder of a U.S. real property interest on the disposition of that interest. A person who fails to withhold becomes personally liable for the tax due. The amount withheld cannot exceed the taxpayer's maximum tax liability associated with the disposition. The transferor or transferee can request a determination and a certificate from the IRS of that liability. If tax is withheld at the default rate of 15%, the taxpayer can request a refund of tax withheld in excess of the taxpayer's liability. 
Here's an example of withholding on the disposition of a direct interest in. Suzuki is a country X citizen and resident who owns real property in Nevada, which she purchased for $250,000 and which is subject to a non-recourse liability of $200,000. She sells the property in 2019 for $210,000 to an unrelated person. If neither Suzuki nor the transferee requests a certificate of maximum tax liability from the IRS, then $31,500 of tax must be withheld at the default rate of 15%. The after-tax proceeds will be insufficient to pay all of the debt on the property. If tax of $31,500 thousand five hundred dollars is withheld Suzuki must file a request with the IRS for a refund of the tax withheld on the other hand if either party to the transaction obtains a withholding certificate from the IRS no tax will be withheld following are special rules for withholding The transferee need not withhold if presented with a valid affidavit stating that the transferor is not a foreign person. In the case of a transfer of stock, the transferee need not withhold if presented with a valid affidavit stating that the stock is not a real property interest, U.S. real property interest. Withholding is not required if a transaction is covered by a treaty exemption. The transferor must generally provide the transferee with a form documenting the applicability of a treaty. Withholding is not required with respect to a gift, except to the extent that the person disposing of the interest is relieved of debt. A transferor is exempt from withholding on up to $300,000 of the amounts realized if the transferee intends to use the real property as a residence. Withholding is not required on the disposition of publicly traded stock. A domestic partnership, trust, or estate must withhold tax with respect to a foreign partner or beneficiary's distributive share of the gain from the disposition of a U.S. real property interest. The amount withheld is ordinarily 35% of the gain. Where a foreign corporation recognizes gain on the distribution of a U.S. real property interest to its shareholders, the corporation must withhold tax at a rate of 35% of the gain it recognizes. If a domestic corporation that is or has been a U.S. real property holding corporation makes a distribution to a foreign shareholder to redeem that shareholder's stock, then withholding is required based on the value of the redemption amount. Withholding is not required by the grantee of an option to acquire a U.S. real property interest. Withholding is required only on the exercise of the option. In the case of a foreclosure or a transfer to the mortgagee in lieu of foreclosure, which is treated as a sale by the mortgagor, withholding is limited to the amount received by the mortgagor. In the case of an installment sale, the amount of withholding is based on the entire sales price and is due at the time of the sale. Let us discuss the procedures for remitting and reporting amounts withheld under Section 1445. A transferee must report and pay over any tax withheld by the 20th day after the date of the transfer. Forms 8288 and 8288A are used for this purpose. Let us now turn to some special rules for the application of Section 1445, the first involves non-recognition transactions. In general, a non-recognition rule applies with respect to a U.S. real property interest only if the property received in the exchange remains subject to U.S. tax on U.S. real property interests. 
any non-recognition provision in the code will apply to a disposition of a U.S. real property interest only if there is a an exchange of a U.S. real property interest for an interest, the sale of which would be subject to U.S. tax. An example of a transaction qualifying for non-recognition treatment is a Section 1031 exchange of one parcel of U.S. real property for another parcel of U.S. real property. Likewise, if U.S. real property is contributed to a domestic corporation in a non-recognition transaction, such as 351, and the corporation is considered a U.S. real property interest, then the transaction also qualifies for non-recognition treatment. Here's an example of a non-recognition transaction. Paolo is a country X citizen and resident who owns rental property in Georgia. He enters into an exchange of the property for other property in an exchange that qualifies for non-recognition treatment under Section 1031. If the other property is U.S. real property, then the non-recognition provision applies. However, if the property is country X real property, Paolo is taxed on the transaction under Section 897. In general, a contribution of a U.S. real property interest to the capital of a foreign corporation is a taxable disposition under Section 897. Gain is recognized by a foreign person under Section 897 on the transfer of a U.S. real property interest to a foreign corporation if the property is transferred to the capital of the corporation. A foreign corporation can elect to be treated as a domestic corporation if it holds a U.S. real property interest. A foreign corporation can elect to be treated as a foreign corporation for purposes of Section 897 if the corporation holds a U.S. real property interest and the corporation is entitled to non-discrimination treatment with regard to that interest under a U.S. tax treaty. A U.S. real property interest held by a partnership is generally deemed to be held by its partners. A partnership is never itself considered a U.S. real property interest because any U.S. real property interests held by the partnership are deemed to be held proportionally by the partners. Accordingly, a, if a partnership sells a U.S. real property interest, then the sale is deemed to have been made individually by the partners for purposes of U.S. tax and withholding. In addition, if a foreign partner sells an interest in a partnership that holds a U.S. real property interest, the partner is deemed to have sold a proportionate share of any U.S. real property interest held by the partnership. Where a partnership disposes of a U.S. real property interest, the transferee, for example the buyer, uh, is generally required to withhold tax under Section 1445. When this occurs, the partnership can credit the amount withheld under Section 1445 against its Section 1446 withholding liabilities. Under Section 1446, a partnership is supposed to withhold tax with respect to the effectively connected income it allocates to foreign partners. Here's an example of a partner's distributive share of gain on the disposition of a U.S. real property interest. Foreign Co. Limited is a foreign partnership that disposes of a U.S. real property interest at a gain. It has both U.S. and non-U.S. partners. Foreign Co. provides to the transferee documentation with respect to its partners, that is, Form W-9 for the U.S. partners and Form W-8-BEN for the foreign partners. 
based on this documentation and any certificates of maximum tax liability, the transferee withholds and remits tax under Section 1445. As to Foreign Co.'s foreign partners, the gain recognized is effectively connected income. Accordingly, as discussed in the lecture on foreign and domestic partnerships, Foreign Co. must withhold tax under Section 1446 on each foreign partner's share of this gain. However, the partnership can credit the amount withheld under Section 1445 against its Section 1446 withholding liabilities. U.S. tax treaties provide rules that are generally consistent with the U.S. tax rules for real U.S. real property interests. U.S. tax treaties generally preserve the right of the United States to impose tax on dispositions of U.S. real property interests. The model treaty permits the United States to tax a foreign resident's gain from both real property and U.S. real property interests. Note that the U.S. model treaty does not define the term U.S. real property interest. However, under Article 3 of the treaty, whenever a term is not defined in the treaty, the term has the meaning given by domestic tax law.